Hello, this is Taki Bankar. And you can do this. This is Taki Retroverb. So the main thing uh, I wanted with this plugin is uh, with this Patra plugin is that I wanted a SLES reverb emulator. And then I saw um, I think it's Impact Science Work that did a SLES reverb emulation. Uh, and uh, it was good. But it was not, it was lacking a bit of versatility. And so I decided to try it on my own with Quatcher uh, to remake things. And I will show you how this works in a second. But basically, the SNES River um, was some delay, some panning, and uh, a bit of bit crushing. So that's how. That's literally all it was, and uh, how it is. Uh, I don't know if it's what it is in the the, the original console fact, but this sounds cool anyway. So um, you have five panels. Um, the first one you can control how much of the side and how much of the mids is going there. So I'm going to hop on this mix which has more stereo than this you will be able to hear so you hear it's doing a bit of uh, bit crushing already uh, so that's that's to be uh, considered. Um, so uh, you have in the input also compression because it's important. Like if you have a lot of transients, like in here, to uh, kind of uh, make them die out, because uh, the reverb, uh, especially with re with uh, drums, it does not sit well. So you hear it's getting a little bit better. Um, now, what I want to show is how to how it works, what uh, is uh, its main purpose, and uh, where you can use it. So the um, the main difference with the the plate reverb, uh, etc., is that this is shorter, but this also adds a lot of room. To the sound, um, and it's so. So this means it's adding a lot of depth in your mix, in your mixes, without muddying the things too much because it's not a long river, or it's not meant to be at least. And uh, so I'll de demonstrate that that's how it sounds.
So, um, how this does, it's, it's basically two delays that have a bit of processing. Uh, so, first thing uh, you, you have in the plugin, it goes to this, this, and the compression is actually a very new emulator. And those are uh, those good compressors. So all of these are by Air Windows, which I will link in the description. But I will also give in the in the archive that has the sound, the, the plugin. I will give uh, those and link also to the sites because the, these are not mine. I don't want to have any trouble by. Uh, uh, Sounding like I'm selling this, but I'm really not. So check out Arendus. So you have a very new compressor. After that, you have a filter, uh, uh, sorry, a bit crush, LFO. So for that, I will uh, move on to instead of reverb, the processed thing. Um, processed means before the reverb. So it goes here, 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 here. Uh, now we can hear the bit crush LFO. Beauty, beauty, so this is a way of adding some movement to the river. So it doesn't sound too bland, you know, like a lot of rooms, but you also have uh, this because it sounds a bit crazy when you have uh, it all, uh, all the way wet. So this is the speed, as you can see. This is the lowest point at, will, it will, uh, at which it will uh, go, and this highest point of the LFO. So the, how this works is basically used a um, uh, 3TP controller because this has an LFO thing and some formulas uh, yeah, this one this one you have the LFO is going here then you have this little thing that makes that when you have a lower here you, you see it uh, goes lower and that here higher now you just have to make sure that um, C is not lower than B because it will do weird things. Just uh, invert and uh, be weird to predict. So I'll leave them at that. And uh, that's basically how this horse is linked to the right of the the bit crush here. Which is also by Air Windows. Every plugin that looks like a puzzle is Air Windows, and the rest is FL Studio stack plugins. So now you have uh, just high pass filters and low pass because it's always useful. And um, you have the reverb. So now we we'll switch to the reverb thing. How this works is um, it goes to first. A monoizer, so you have uh, everything mono, so the delays don't have to deal with uh, left, right, left, right, uh, and uh, I mean, when you pan it, uh, it doesn't it doesn't go uh, uh, weirdly when you pan it all the way left or right, or not all the way, especially. Um, so you have the two delay planes. You have the the main thing, which is diffusion. This is the time actually. Um, so the the more diffusion, the more time. And you hear when you, you know, when you try to to move it while the song is playing, it will give a weird thing because it it tries to uh, keep pitch at the same time of uh, tempo sync. 
uh, and I think it's a key pitch that does weird formants, you know. So, uh, so just keep that in mind. And um, the width, basically, it's um, after the after each delay plugin, I have this which goes all the way left, and another one for the second delay which goes all the way right. And the more you do, the more it's to is full, the more it's separated. And the way uh, the decay, by the way, is just the feedback. Um, and the way that it makes this weird reverb uh, is that. And the time is offset on each of these. So I think the left is like uh, uh, maybe 10 milliseconds apart and uh, from this. So this I just did with the thing, I think, I think. Um, yeah, with this. So I just added a, a little uh, more than we have in the, in the first free delay. And that's how it works. Now you also have a tone knob which goes darker when you use it or brighter. So that's everything about it. Um, now, as I said, it has depth without uh, muddying the mix too much, and that's the main thing. So I'll try it out on three different tracks and show you how it uh, how it uh, does. And basically, they have three levels of intensity and compression. Uh, so this is less compressed, a bit more, and a bit and even more. And this is less intense, a bit more, very intense. So I will. Really Try to play with it a bit and see if I can come up with um, uh, settings that works great. Because the, every mix will need a different thing. That's the first mix. Now let's try the second one. I'll, I'll reset the values. Oh, you, oh, you have also a, a custom reset values, which I didn't know was possible before. So that's very cool. Um, I'll just say for these two things, um, the main thing of why I use mid side is because the the drums are in the mid and the a lot of a lot, a lot more tonal instruments are on the side. So this means I can separate um, the drums a bit more than with compression.
So you hear uh, how it is nice and how it's not really uh, so hard on the mix. Now I will try some some um, reverb so that you hear the difference. This is supposed to not button the mix a bit, but you will hear it's quite different. Here, how it is uh, a lot different. Now, I'll do the third mix and uh, try to do the same thing. Uh, try to do some settings that sound good and transparent. Whoops, sorry. Um, yeah, okay. One thing I'll note for you is that the fusion, as it is the time of the delay, is not something you want to crump up when you have high transients because this will sound a lot very bouncy and uh, this will kind of muddy the, the impact of the mix. Whereas for longer things, you can do it very far, but I keep it low here. So that's basically Takira Trover. I will put the three songs uh, I've used in the description. And um, and you also have the drive with the archive file of uh, this. Now, this version with the tone control only works in FL21. But I also have for a few uh, people who asked me um, an, an FL20 version. So this work, this works from FL 20.8 and upwards, but it doesn't have the tone control. Um, and it will also be included in the same RAR. So that was it for today. If you have any suggestion for, for new plugins, you can tell them in the comments and, uh, I will see you next time.